Hey guys, it's Adi. So I'm going to make this quick. You saw there at the beginning that this is just an updated version of the tutorial I made back in 2019. Um, you know, had lots of people enjoy it, but I also had some comments on, you know, how there was things missing or I could have uh, done things, some, some things better and I have a new way of doing it. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to be doing differently this time is we're going to be using ModMe. Uh, here's the website, modme.github.io. It's in the description, um, but we're going to need to download this. So go to that website and look for the portable version. The installer is not going to actually install it to your system. We don't need to do that. We can just use the portable one. Um, so I am going to put it in a folder that I made specifically for this tutorial called modme. It has nothing in it right now. <clears throat> so... Here it is, gives you the zip. I'm gonna go ahead and extract it. And this is what you should have. So this is the command prompt version of it. Uh, we're gonna use the GUI, the skin, uh, just to make things a little easier. First thing it says, type in the words I and agree. So if you don't agree, then don't do this, but I do. All right, check to see if the version is up to date. As you can see, it's using version 7.00. Uh, this is going to be for anyone that doesn't have a Wii already modded, or if you use my guide in 2019, still do this because it's going to update all the things we did last time. So. Start here to mod your Wii. Next. Is this your first time soft modding your Wii, or would you like to update all the existing soft mods, aka rehack it? So, yes. What's your current system version? So, if we look at the Wii I'm going to be doing, this is one of my roommates. I've already updated this, and if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to play the video from my 2019 version on how to do that right now. So, we've got the Wii options, so we're going to click on that. Go to Wii settings. Wait for this to load. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to update our Wii fully. So this is already on 4.3U, which is the most up to date, but there's probably some hidden updates that we're probably going to need. So just go over to the third page and click on Wii system update. Connect to the internet. Yes, please. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to say, you know, if it's got. Um, unauthorized mods and blah 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 it's going to remove those so that's why we want to update the Wii fully first because if it accidentally somehow <laughs> updates either through uh, the internet or a disc that has an update on it like Skyward Sword it may do some weird stuff uh, to your Wii so we're going to go ahead and just update first All right, so it says there are no dates available, so we're good there. The next thing we're gonna do though is put in Skyward Sword and it should have an update of some sort on it. Um, the last time I did this, it definitely did. So I'm gonna grab the game and go ahead and put it in there. So we'll wait for it to load. And you can see when I put it in the disc, it already says Wii system update. So it won't even let you play the game unless you have it. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. In order to use the software, you gotta update your Wii, cool, great. Once again, it's gonna get rid of unauthorized mods and such. So there we go. All right, we has been updated. Going to restart now. And now you can see it actually shows the game, so we're actually able to uh, play it if we want. All right, so you should have your Wii fully up to date. Um, if you're one of the people that is looking to do uh, Skyward Sword, 
and you don't have the disc and that's the entire reason you want to use the USB loader, there is a way to do that. Uh, it'll be later in this tutorial. I have not done it personally, but there is a way to do it through Modmi where you can make it to where the disc doesn't ask for the updates and such. Um, so just know that there is a way to do that. The people in comments asked me about that last time. There is a way. Anywho, so I have this one fully up to date. So it was asking, what version is it? I know that it's 4.3 um, U because I'm in the United States. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just select those. All right. It's going to ask me what kind of exploit I want to use to mod the Wii. This is going to um, install the homebrew channel, uh, boot me, and those things. So we're going to use Wii brand. Um, it requires an SD card. As I said at the beginning, you're going to need an SD card no matter what for this. Um, the different versions doesn't really matter as long as it's, you know, 32 gigs or less. Uh, it could be SD, SDHC. I think even NXC works. Um, just you probably got one lying around. So yeah, just use whatever. Anywho, Wii brand. Now I need the Wii's MAC address. So going to go back to the Wii real quick. We're going to get that. So. And you can see there's the, the version up here. Just to make sure. Internet. Connection settings. Oh, sorry. Okay. Console info. You want this top line right here. This is if you have like a LAN adapter uh, wired Ethernet connected anyways. So we needed that. I'm going to go ahead and type that in now. And you can use um, the the hyphens or not. It doesn't really matter. Hit next. All right. <clears throat> Bond me recommends against necessarily changing system menus, blah, blah, blah. So this is if you're like trying to update your menu and such like that. I'm on 4.3, so don't need it. Um, this is channels we want, like photo, the me channel, the internet channel. I don't need any of that. A custom theme, you can do it. Uh, I'm not going to. And then, would you like to set up a USB loader? It's kind of the entire point of this tutorial. So, uh, yeah. What USB loader would you like to use? Well, gives you the option of USB loader, GX, configurable USB loader, WeFlow, and all. We're going to choose all. Or would you like to save it? And we're going to do right now SD card because um, that's what we have. Uh, if you want to use your USB, obviously you can change this at any point. But right now, we're just going to do the SD card, assuming that everyone's got the SD card and everyone may not have the USB correct, like right now. So we're just going to go with that. Let's select where to save files for your SD card. If your SD is not already FAT32, if you're unsure, may save time choosing a different location for now, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to save it there where it tells me to. Confirm. And now we wait. Sometimes you'll see this come up. Just hit OK. And then you're going to see this nifty little guide. And this is a HTML file. And this is going to be different for every single person. Um, it's going to show you exactly what to do for each and every um, different we that you've that you ever want to do also this is still going by the way in the background it's still downloading a lot of things but it opened the html file by itself just to show you what needs to happen so this literally tells you step by step everything you need to do it has pictures it has videos like everything um it's got even like these little things to show you more info fun facts here's all the you know hacks for preloader what the ios's are custom ios's and here's the unique list of wads gonna we're gonna be installing for this particular Wii. these are all updated versions etc etc so it's pretty cool very straightforward and makes life a lot easier all right as you can see it's finished give me a little uh, jingle there and it done. So it comes back up. This is acting as if like you wanted to do it again. Don't need it. So we're going to cancel.
All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to rehack this Wii. So I'm going to act like I'm re-putting the Humber channel back on the Wii. Um, you can see it's already on there, but that's okay. We can we can do it again. So the first thing we need to do, it says, is format the SD card to SAT32. A um, couple ways to do this. Uh, you can do this in Windows, or if you're one of the RE4 speedrunners that's watching this, um, you can go ahead and format it a certain way. Um, you want a certain byte size, so we're going to go ahead and just do that. So we're going to be using the FAT32 GUI formatter, which is located in the copy to SD program files inside of the ModMe stuff. Um, first thing you want to do, though, is go to your SD card here and just go ahead and format it to, like, something else, just NTFS, like, sure, you know, whatever. And then we're going to go to where it says copy to SD program files. So copy to SD program files, FAT32, GUI formatter. Let's run that. So if you're one of the RE4 speedrunners, you're going to want to do 512. That's important. Um, otherwise, if you're just doing this for regular USB stuff, uh, you can choose whatever the default was, 4096, or sometimes the defaults to that. But anyways, we want 512 for the speedrunners. Hit start. OK. You see an error come up? It's probably because it's already in FAT32, so that's why we did the format to NTFS first, just so this thing can run correctly. Otherwise, it'll, sometimes it'll come up and say it's in use if it's FAT32. Okay, so it's done. We can close out of that, and if we go back to C, we can look at the properties of it, <clears throat> and you can see it's FAT32, so we're good to go. All right, next part. We're going to be copying files from this, and this is going to be different for every person. This is just where it's at for me, and we're going to put it onto the SD card. All right, so we go copy to SD, just grab all of it, copy it, go to your SD card, paste it all, and you wait. All right, everything's there. Some of the stuff, obviously, you don't need in there, like these HTML guides and so what. But just copy everything and call it good for now. Uh, we'll be deleting some of this later or not have it on the SD card later anyways. So next thing it says to do is we're going to be installing the Homebrew channel and BootMe. Now, BootMe is the device that's going to allow us to back up our Wii's uh, NAND so that if we ever somehow uh brick are we we can restore it using that so this is a uh, brick prevention method and i did not cover this in my previous tutorial so that's why i'm covering it now and we're going to be doing this for this week today all right so for this one we used the we brand one and this is also known as letter bomb um used to go to the hack me website um but it's a little different um, you can still use that, but this is going to be using uh, the one we use from ModMe. As you can see, it's got like, a little green envelope instead of a uh, red one. Uh, but anywho, the thing you're going to do is you're going to plug the SD card into the Wii now that it has all the files. You're going to go to the message board, and then you're going to click on the icon of the little letter. So let's go to the Wii. going to grab the SD card. And this is going to be the part where the GameCube controller is also going to come in... <laughs> Uh, handy or needed actually uh, to be able to do the uh, boot me section of this. So anyhow, so we've got the SD card in there. You go to the message board. You can see that here's the letter bomb. Um, you may have to go a couple days back to see it sometimes, but for me, it's here. Um, this is for someone that has not modded their Wii at all. You would click on this, but because I've already modded this one. Um, if you come back to the instructions here, it says if you have homebrew channel, boot me or a forward channel, then do this instead. So I've got to launch the hack me installer via the homebrew channel instead. Um, it's going to look the same though, either way. So let's go back to the Wii. Go home channel. So we're going to go to the HackMe installer and load it.
Now, if you clicked on the letter and you're doing this from scratch, this is what you would come up to. So same exact screen and everything, um, just two different ways of getting to it, depending on if you've already modded or not. This takes a little bit, usually like a minute or so, and it should pop up and say, press one on the Wiimote to continue. All right, we're gonna hit one. And here are the options. So right now I'm gonna hit continue, just hit A. I'm gonna go ahead and install the Homebrew channel, even though it's already installed. Just so you can see what it looks like. All right, that's done. And then we're gonna install or use Boomi. So we're gonna install Boomi as an iOS. It requires an SD card, and this is why we have to have the SD card, and we also have to have the GameCube controller. So, hit yes to continue. Install it, yes. This is all using the Wiimote. Once again, D-pad and A. Done, so we hit continue. And now we can go back to the main menu, and we can exit. All right, so in order to do the NAND backup using Bootme, um, with your Wiimote, if you hit the home button, it should now have a launch Bootme section inside of the homebrew channel. So we're going to launch that. And this is the part where the GameCube controller is needed because if you try to use the D-pad or anything else on the Wiimote, it literally just does not work. So, with the GameCube controller, we're going to use the D-pad because the analog stick doesn't work. We're going to go over to this little configuration thing. And the first one is backup. So it's saying we're going to backup our NAND to the SD card. So we're going to click on that. And this will take anywhere from 10 to 15-ish minutes. Um, but essentially, it is backing up your Wii so that if you ever break it, you will be able to use the reverse of this, use that um, red arrow part, and it will take the NAND you have and flash it back to your Wii. So once this is complete, we're going to obviously take what it gives us and store it in a safe place on our computer, hard drive, wherever. And also we're going to redo this again after we have completely soft modded the Wii. So we'll have one that's a fresh one. And then we also will have one that's a completely soft modded Wii. So that way you can restore either or, and then you should be good. Okay, so our backup is complete. So on the controller, I'm just going to hit A. back and I want to go to the homebrew channel so our backup is now on our SD card and uh, we'll take that out here in a bit to uh, put that on our Peter's hard drive to store it but for now uh, we're gonna go to the next step that is installing preloader so preloader is gonna make it to where um, we can do a, a, several different things, but basically it's just another form of uh, brick protection. And uh, it also has some nifty um, hacks that we're gonna be putting on. So anywho, let's go back to the Wii. We're gonna click on preloader, installer, and hit load. All right, so you can use either the game controller or the uh, Wiimote at this point. It says press plus or A, install, so it's plus on the Wiimote, A on the uh, controller. So let's do that. Oh. So to actually get to preloader, um, it'll tell you You've got to hold, like whenever you start up the Wii, you hold down the reset button, um, shown in the picture right there, and it comes up to the menu. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
but because we uh, already installed it and have the loader right here, um, I'm not going to restart. I'm just going to do it this way. All right. So this is preloader. So um, if we go back and look at what it suggests for recommended hacks and such, um, I'm going to do some of these. These are all optional if you want, um, but nice to have there's some other things like being able to launch straight to the homebrew channel so that way you don't have to use your Wiimote to get to the homebrew channel on, this, on the main default Wii menu, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just install a couple of these. All right, so using the D-pad, I'm just gonna go down to system menu hex, and here's the list. So the ones it recommends, I'm gonna go ahead and do. All right, so once you have everything enabled that you want to use here, just uh, go down to the bottom where it says Save Settings. Okay. And then you can hit you to go back. And then I want to set it to where it'll always load to the Homebrew channel. So if I go down to Settings, it'll give me options for Auto Boot, and I want to Auto Boot to the Homebrew channel. So I'll use the D-pad to go right until I see Homebrew channel. Go back. And as for the people that were looking to do Skyward Sword, um, I believe this block disk updates is the one that I was talking about that may potentially make it to where you can do this. Um, since it removes the Wii system update screen that's included on some games, forcing you to update then to play the game. Um, so I'm imagining that's going to fix that. But like I said, never tested it because I already had Skyward Sword and I've already updated it. Um, but yeah, just note that. All right, so once you have all that, we're just going to go back to the Humber channel now. And now we're going to install some wads. All right, so let's go back to the HTML file here, and we're going to install some wads. So if you want to know what um, iOSs and stuff are, you do that there, and then we're going to see the ones we need to install here. Um, there's also forwarder channels for like um, WeFlow and USB Loader GX, stuff like that. Um, but anyhow, so it tells us to go into the Yaim Mod Me edition, and we're going to do it from there. So let's just go back to the Wii here and load this bad boy. All right. So we're going to select the we SD slot because that's what we're using, and you can't really change it because we're in right now. I hit A, and it's going to show all of our files here, and you should see the list of 44 all in here. Um, so what we're going to do is hold down the plus on the Wiimote for about two seconds, and then it will select all of them. So now you can see everything has a little plus next to it here. And then basically we're just gonna hit A to install. And you can see it says 44 files marked. That's how many it said I was gonna have. So that is correct. It should show the number you need um, whenever you do this. But anyway, so I'm gonna hit A to continue. All right, so as you can see, all of them installed. Players or anything. I'm just going to hit A on the Wiimote. Now I'm just going to hit the home button, and it'll start the Wii. Now that we have all these installed, this is the part where I would do another NAND backup. Um, so I'm going to do that, but this is up to you if you want to. I would. Um, so I'm just going to hit home. Go back to Boomi and do that. I'm not going to show you this part. That'll take forever. but. Anyways, I'm going to do it. All right, the second NAND backup is done. And at this point, uh, we're going to get into how to format your USB or SD card uh, in order to play games using some of these loaders. Um, and if you don't want some of these channels anymore, um, you're not going to be like uh, using them for anything or, you know, you don't want someone to come in and like start messing with your stuff. Um, that'd be a good time to go ahead and delete those. You can do that on the computer or you can do it right here in the homebrew channel. So let's just um, select some of these and hit delete.
what we're left with right now is USB loader GX, clean rip, and Nintendo. All right, so let's go ahead and take the SD card out and put it back into the computer. So eject it, and you won't see the apps anymore. Let's go back to the screen here. Unplug the SD card. All right. So a lot of these things we don't need anymore, but the first thing we definitely want to do is get the um, backups that were made. So backup is keys.bin and nan.bin. That's, that's the two files we need um, for the nan backup. So let's go ahead and get those off there. And I have a folder right here where I'm going to put them. And the other thing you want is the boot me folder. Just in case. Anywho, uh, now we, if we go to apps here, you can see we've got clean rip, Nintendo, and USB loader GX. Um, we also would like to have WeFlow in here as well. So if we look inside of the apps that it gave us to copy to SD, um, it wasn't in there. So because it wasn't in there, um, we're just going to go back into our Podme skin and we'll just download it real quick. So I'm clicking on USB loader setup wizard. We're going to do WeFlow. Uh, I'm going to do SD card for now. Cool. This is a new uh, HTML file, but we don't need that. We still use the same one. Finish. And now if we go to copy to SD, we should see, yep, WeFlow. And inside the apps, we also have WeFlow. So we need both of these. Um, so the apps one, let's go ahead and copy that over. And then... The WeFlow other one goes on the root, like so. Okay, so we now have all the loaders we need. Um, Nintendo will be for running GameCube games. Clean Rip is to rip GameCube games. Um, USB loader GX and WeFlow uh, will load the games and also you can use USB loader GX to uh, rip your Wii discs. So that's how you're going to get all of your um, discs that you have ripped so that you can play them on USB or SD card. So if we look at the setup here on the HTML file, it tells you basically everything you need to know. Um, how to change the partition style to MBR because some of them are GPT by default. Got to change that first. Tells you how to do that step by step. I'm not going to go through that because my stuff's already uh, MBR. Um, and then it tells you how to partition and format your drives and or SD cards. So you can do several different options and it tells you how to do it. FAT32 is the recommended one. Um, FAT32 is going to be able to be used on the homebrew channel for being able to see like the apps and stuff. Um, homebrew channel can't see NTFS, um, but it can see FAT32 formatted drives. So you can see both USB or SD cards as FAT32 that way. So that's why it's recommended. Um, it tells you that here, but um, yeah, you'll be able to play anything and um, I'll kind of go through how to set that up um, real quick. Um, but this is probably the best option is just read this. And that way you can figure out exactly um, how you want to set yours up. What it's going to look like, so this is my SD card right here. Um, I'm going to go into the root here. I'm going to make a new folder called games. Now games is going to be where you put your GameCube games. And then WBFS is where you put your Wii games. So GameCube games, Wii games. So I have a backup of one of my other SD cards here. Um, so I'm just going to use um, that as my example. So this is game one, a uh, disc one and disc two of uh, Resident Evil 4. So I'll take both of those and I will start to copy them over into the games folder here. And then I have Resident Evil 4, the PAL version here. And the way you want to set it up for um, 
each game is you'll have it to where it's like in a folder like this, and then you have the name of the game here. Whenever you rip it, that's what it'll be named as. Um, so I'm going to take that folder and put it in here. You would do the exact same thing for the GameCube games if you had um, a bunch of them. So you would you would go in, make the folder name, and then you would put the games inside the actual folders of what it's called. Basically, it would look something like this. This is a, an example from my hard drive where I have all of my GameCube games, and you can see it's just got the folder name of what the game is, and then it just has game.iso for each one, and they're just called game.iso. Um, the Wii ones are named from the actual like name of the game. Um, it's got a weird code. All right, so games have been transferred over. So go ahead and eject this, and I'll just kind of show you what it looks like when I try to run one. All right, so we've got WeFlow on there now. Uh, let's try to run the GameCube game first, so we'll go and don't. All right, so we're going to choose SD because that's where they are. And then you can either choose to boot the disk if there's a disk in the drive. We don't have one. Um, and then you can see here it says disk 2 is that one game disc one is that one um you can also or you do anything else if you hit b and go to settings you can choose a bunch of different things here um we're not gonna mess with any of this right now um you can also do an update if we hit the x button if you're um connected to the internet but anywho we're gonna go back and we're just gonna try to launch the game Okay, so as you can see, um, it's loading into the game. It's asking me all the initial stuff because I don't have a memory card plugged in right now. And I don't have the uh, virtual memory card so, uh, selected in Nintendo. But it is loading. Okay. So now I'm going to hit. Reset, and we'll see if it takes me back to the RE4 menu, or if it takes me back to channel. Could do a couple different things. Each loader is different. Okay, so this one took me back, so we're going to hit the power button instead and just completely turn it off. Okay. Now let's try to load one of the, the Wii game that I put on here. So we could do that one of two ways. I'm going to do it with Wii Flow. Um, used to be Loader GX. I went over pretty detailed in my other um, 2019 tutorial um, in here. So if you want to see more of like how to do clean rip and how to do USB Loader GX type stuff, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm going to link that in here as well, just because it's a good guide. But you can also just look online for guides. And, um, you know, it's just a, it's just a nice way to have all of your games in one place. Um, you can do the same thing with Wii Flow. Um, so, yeah, check that out if you need. But for now, like I said, I'm just going to use Wii Flow just because uh, that's what we're going to be using for speedrunning of uh, RE4 for Wii. So I'm just going to use this. The loaders work a little differently. Um, you know, I might find success with one or the other. Just depends. Um, I've used USB loader GX for years now, and I still love it. It's great. Um, we found that sometimes WeFlow will give um, faster loads, and in our, the case of RE4 speedrunning, it did give faster loads for some reason. So, so we're going to be using. Anyways, all right. So you can see it defaults to looking at the SD card. Um, you can change that though um, by going to the settings and in here there's a lot of options 
but basically you change it to where it's using um, the USB instead. Um, Anywho, I'm going to click on the game. It's going to take it a second. We flow loads way faster with USBs, I have found, so SD cards, it's kind of slow. Um, but anyways, we're going to hit play, and we'll see. It might take it a little bit to, uh, to load. Um, it looks like it's frozen, like, you know, you like can't move or anything, but it is actually working. Okay, so you game loaded. Um, you got to plug in a, a nunchuck for this one, so I'm going to do that really quickly. Like that. There you go. Don't need a system file. Working. Like I said, it's kind of slow there at the start on SD card, but so if I hit the home button, you see it's the normal like B menu. Okay, that's about it. So, want to make a huge shout out here to uh, X Flack for making this. <laughs> Um, and whoever else helped him develop this, because this is, you know, very straightforward, very simple for anyone to do. Um, I had used it back in the day before I made my other tutorial, but I didn't do that. I used um, a very manual method of doing it, and after looking at this again with the new version 7, uh, it's just very, very, very easy and got a lot of details and videos and everything you would ever need. Um, so it tells you, you know, you can update your stuff by using their file cleanup and app updaters, a whole bunch of suggestions. So I would very thoroughly read the HTML file it spits out for each and every one of you and, um, even go donate because, uh, <laughs> this is simply amazing. Um, if you need help, um, check forums check my old guide my old video if that you know if you're needing help with like usb or gx type things um i'm not a huge source of knowledge on everything we modding i've only done it for a few years you know since like 2016 um you know it's like i know some things and a lot of things i don't so just check the internet and then if you still need help you know try commenting and maybe someone in the comments will know the answer. Um, for all the Resident Evil 4 speedrunners watching this, there will be a part two to this video. It'll be a separate video, and it'll show you the exact steps on how to get the uh, GC USB and Wii USB uh, up and running with the correct hardware, USBs, um, SD cards, and all that for the fastest loads. So uh, check the description, check the comments for that, and I guess we will see you later.